Fancy restaurant or fish and chips? Crowded areas or seclusion? No matter what you're looking for in an Oregon coast town, there is undoubtedly something for everybody. And in this video, we're going to talk about what are the things you should be prioritizing in your home search and what you need to know before looking at the Oregon coast for either a second home or vacation home. No matter what you're looking for at the Oregon coast, stay tuned to learn more. Hey everybody, this is Paul Clem with Your Home Team coming to you from the Oregon coast. And if you want to learn everything there is to know about what it's like to live, work, eat, sleep, play, and the pros and cons of living at the Oregon coast, make sure to hit that subscribe button and tap that little bell so you're notified every time we drop a new video. And we are getting people every day calling us, emailing, texting, who are thinking about moving to the Oregon coast or relocating here. And we love to hear from you. So if you are thinking about relocating to the area or moving to the Oregon coast, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, uh, or even schedule a Zoom call in the description below. No matter how you get a hold of us, we have your back when it comes to moving to the Oregon coast. So if you're looking at the Oregon coast for a beach house, um, whether it's a second home, it's a vacation home, or you're looking at relocating full time to the area, there are undoubtedly a number of reasons uh, and, and a number of things that draw you to the area. Obviously the beauty, obviously, um, you know, the different towns in terms of what they have to offer, the activities, um, the restaurants, the shops, um, you know, and just the beauty overall, the landscape, um, and, and just kind of living that Oregon coast lifestyle. Um, so in this video, we're going to talk about the top six criteria that you should really be weighing when you're looking at each town or each region of the Oregon coast. And number one on this list is going to be a proximity to the airport. Um, so obviously PDX in Portland um, is uh, the only international airport uh, in, uh, the, in the state. And um, that's where the majority of air travel, you know, comes, uh, comes in and, and flies out of. Um, and so PDX is going to be closest to the Northern region of the Oregon coast, kind of that Northern third um, of the coast. So we're looking at towns like Astoria, Seaside, Cannon Beach, Manzanita, Rockaway Beach, areas like that where you can, uh, even down to Lincoln City, where you can get to Portland um, in a couple hours, maybe two and a half hours, depending on uh, where you're coming from, uh, if you are looking at, um, you know, frequent air travel. Um, Eugene, there's an airport um, where you can fly uh, to a lot of places around the country, and that's going to be closer to the central Oregon coast. So, you know, you're looking at like from Lincoln City uh, down to Newport, down to Florence and the towns in between there. Um, you're probably looking at at least having the option of a quicker drive to an airport, um, just going uh, straight to Eugene. And then going down on the southern part of the coast, you have uh, the airport in North Bend, which uh, really only services um, flights from a few different areas. Um, and, it, and it's primarily servicing uh, the golf resort. So, you know, you're going to get uh, frequent flights in from like San Francisco, Denver, Portland, uh, maybe Seattle now. Um, some, some, of the, uh, uh, some of the flights, um, you know, come and go. Uh, and I think as they renew those contracts, uh, you know, I'm not really sure the ins and outs of the airport business, but definitely a lot more limited. So if you're looking at the Southern Oregon coast as a destination um, to move to, definitely um, you know, the accessibility of being able to fly out and kind of take those vacations around the country or internationally, um, looking at proximity to the closest airport that uh, can facilitate that for you. Um, the Southern Oregon coast, you know, isn't going to have, you know, as much accessibility to that. So um, definitely keep in mind, you know, the region of the coast that you're looking at 
how close to an airport are you and what are your options with that particular airport? Um, number two on the list, and this is gonna be a huge consideration, probably something that has a lot of implications um, that you may not necessarily consider unless you've spent a ton of time in these areas and that's population size. You know, you have towns like uh, Lincoln City and Newport and Astoria and Florence, you know, these are gonna be, um, you know, maybe 7,000 up to 10,000, 11,000 people, pretty good sized small town, um, but they're not created equal. You know, you look at a town like, like Lincoln City, and if somebody told you 50,000 people live there, it would be easy to believe because it's such a large stretch of the highway. Um, it seems like it just takes forever to get through and it seems like a much larger place than it is population wise. Um, even Astoria, you know, Astoria, um, it, it, you could, you know, definitely say, it's a place that feels like, you know, you have maybe 20, 25, 30,000 people living there and it's really only like 10,000. Um, you know, similar with Florence and some of the other areas that are kind of sitting in that range. Coos Bay and North Bend, that's actually the, the largest area population wise um, on the coast. Um, so you're looking at close to 25, maybe 30,000 people across Coos County. Um, kind of in that immediate region. And so you're going to get a much larger community feel, still a small town, you know, um, and, and, you know, still a small kind of tight knit community in a lot of ways, but for the Oregon coast, it's a much larger area population wise. And then you get into places like, uh, like Garibaldi, like uh, Oceanside, like Yahats, some of these just kind of small coastal villages, fishing villages, um, or just very small towns that, you know, you're looking at under a thousand people population, maybe under 2000 people population, your experience in those areas is going to be vastly different day to day, you know, just purely based on the amount of people around you. So depending on what you're looking for, looking at the population size, but also kind of what the implications are on that particular town, um, is going to give you a much better idea of what places, what areas are going to suit you best um, as you're going through this search. Um, another thing too is uh, just the activities and the amenities that a particular town offers. Um, you'll find yearly events, annual events up and down the coast. Um, and, and there's, you know, there's so much to offer where if you lived in one town, it's not like you couldn't drive up you know, maybe 50 miles, 75 miles to a town where there's another event going on necessarily. And you may not want to be living in a town that for a week out of the year, you know, brings in 50,000 people or 100,000 people over the course of that time. Um, you know, something like the Newport um, Seafood and Wine Festival, for example, you know, that's just crams the city traffic. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great for the local economy, but also, you know, if you're living there, or um, spending your time there, you know, that might be more of a nuisance than you're looking for potentially. Um, and then um, beyond the activities that are going on throughout the year in these different areas, uh, just the amenities. Um, you know, you're, you're gonna have a lot of towns that, you know, have uh, trails and, and, and parks and um, a lot of uh, Oregon coast towns have great boardwalks um, and then some don't. So you know, uh, trails and access to the beach, for example, and um, how those beaches are maintained and cared for um, and, and what sort of, uh, again, just overall amenities that these towns offer, you're really going to get a wide range. So um, if, you're, if you're looking into what's fitting your lifestyle the best, and you know, if you like to go on walks, for example, or you know, if you have a dog and, and you want to, you know, go to um, a park or live near a park, maybe if you're offset from, from the beach aways, depending on what town you're in, those are all things that you should be prioritizing in your search. Um, and then kind of in, in that same breath, number four on our list is uh, the um, kind of the local commerce, you know, restaurants, shops, uh, boutiques, galleries, um, you know, uh, you'll find a lot of similarities and a lot of crossover across, you know, up and down the Oregon coast um, and in different towns and different regions. Um, but you're going to have towns that have, you know, much nicer, much more expensive, kind of fancier restaurants, places that maybe cater to, 
um, cater to tourists um, more that are coming in and spending a lot of money, you know, on a vacation uh, versus places that, you know, you might want to uh, take your partner out or your family out on a regular basis, you know, to, to just to go out to dinner, but, you know, you don't want to spend an arm and a leg. Um, so looking at, you know, the restaurants that are offered, are they kind of catering to uh, the locals or are they more catering to the tourist industry? Again, there's going to be a lot of gray area and crossover in these places, but, um, and then uh, again, along that line too, just looking at the shops that are offered, um, you know, whether it's antique stores, boutiques, um, gift shops, or just local vendors, um, you have a lot of local artists, local craftsmen, you know, local creators in, in, uh, in uh, these different towns on the Oregon coast. And, you know, how much of that you want to, um, you kind of want to, you know, have the exposure to, um, you know, is, is going to vary. So looking at um, e even just a Google search of, you know, all the businesses in a particular town will give you a, a really good idea of um, what are some of the things that are offered in that particular town and is going to give you a lot more insight as to what that town has to offer overall. Um, number five on the list here, and this is a big one, it's landscape. So, you know, this can have so many effects on just the overall aesthetic and feel of a town. You know, how it's situated on the coast, what the beaches are like, do you have a river coming in or, or, or creeks or streams coming in uh, from the east, you know, coming into the ocean? Do you, do you have mountains in the coastal range, you know, just right off uh, to the east back behind you? Or is it more of kind of a valley um, where it's, uh, you know, flatter and longer? Um, these are all going to change, uh, you know, what, um, you know, what your surroundings look like. And there's a big variety. Um, of, you know, of, of different landscapes that, uh, that you can get up and down the Oregon coast. So, you know, undoubtedly, if, if, if you're moving to the area, you know, you probably have a vision of, you know, what's really going to suit you the best and really having an understanding of what it's like to be there in a particular town, doing that 360 degree view, um, you know, is, is going to help you make that decision and, and kind of prioritize and narrow down that list of what towns you'd like to uh, potentially uh, purchase a home in. So uh, just looking at the overall, you know, uh, geographical configuration um, and, and the overall landscape uh, is going to help you a lot in your search. Um, and then six and finally on this list uh, for kind of what to look for in a Oregon coast town uh, is the activities that are offered. So, you know, this does um, kind of complement some of the other things on your list, like uh, the landscape, for example, and local amenities and just what the town and what the region offers. But um, you're, you're going to have towns uh, on the Oregon coast that maybe are a little more catered to specific activities in terms of lifestyle, um, whether it be surfing, you know, biking, hiking, um, you know, fishing, crabbing, kayaking, boating, um, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of towns that are set right on uh, the sand dunes, you know, so you have things like ATVing and, and, and dune buggies and things like that, where, you know, if that's something that's really important to you and you have an ATV and you want to be able to use that on a regular basis recreationally, you know, there's, there's going to be regions of the coast uh, where that's going to be right on your doorstep. And there's going to be regions of the coast where you have to drive, you know, 60, 90 minutes um, to get to uh, to get to your spot. So um, golf courses, I mean, there's really golf courses set all up and down the coast uh, for sure, but um, not all courses are created equal. And there's gonna be areas and regions that are a little more heavy on golf, um, places that uh, maybe have a course or two in town um, or places where you might have to drive uh, to uh, a particular course, for example. So, um, all of these things put together, you know, are going to help you get a better understanding um, in this huge pool of options that you have in terms of uh, these different towns and regions on the Oregon coast um, to, to better narrow down, you know, what you're really looking for and where you should prioritize your home searches. Um, so 
hopefully that's helpful. And if you are thinking about moving to the Oregon coast, um, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, schedule a Zoom call in the description below of this video. Um, no matter how you get a hold of us, we have your back when it comes to moving to the Oregon coast. And until next time, we'll check you later.